friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide and welcome back to another pantry challenge video. Today is a homemade soup and cornbread, both from scratch. I, very, I specifically chose a soup recipe that I've never made before because I thought it might be helpful to show y'all how you can create your own recipe really easy, even if you're not used to cooking from scratch. It really is really simple. So we'll get to that in a minute. First up is the cornbread. It takes about 20 minutes to bake and this soup is gonna take no time. So let's go ahead and go in on that. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 degrees. Whoops. Okay. I have a cast iron skillet back here. I'm going to grease it really quickly just with a little bit of butter. I'm just gonna rub it on there. And then we need to get a quarter cup of butter melting in a pot. Okay, that's melting. Now we're gonna get going on our powder mix. We need one cup of flour. One cup of cornmeal. One teaspoon of salt. Three teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna whisk that together really good. That's all of our dry ingredients. Now we are going to crack two eggs. And then you can either do honey or sugar for this recipe. I do either or. We can alternate between them. It calls for a quarter cup. I have reduced it down to as little as three teaspoons before just to make it less sugar. Um, but when I do honey, I don't even measure. I just do like a circle around the bowl twice. And then we need one cup of milk. We're gonna mix that around good. Our butter's almost done melting. That's the last ingredient that we need. Now we just need to wait on the butter. Okay, our butter is melted, so we're gonna add that to the mix. Butter is precious these days, right? <laughs> so I like to get a spatula and get every last drip out of there. And then I switch to a spatula at this point. It's ready to go into our pan. Talk about easy and quick. And it will go really wonderful with our soup. Anytime I make soup, I try to serve cornbread or a homemade like Texas toast garlic bread. Just smooth that out well. And into the oven it goes for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, let me get all these cornbread ingredients out of the way and then get our soup ingredients and I'll be right back. Okay, we have our ingredients out. We are making a butternut squash soup. Now this is an experiment for my family this year. We grew butternut squash for the first time this year. The reason why is because butternut squash is one of the longest lasting whole foods that there is. It can last, I mean, I, I'm still experimenting, but I have research has told me that it can last about nine months and you don't have to preserve it. You can just set it right here in a cool dark place in your home no canning no dehydrating nothing now i did choose to go ahead and cube up butternut squash and can it because this means that this is going to take me five minutes versus 30 minutes now if you are cooking from a whole butternut squash my favorite way to do it is in the instant pot or a pressure cooker you don't even have to cut it if your butternut squash will fit you can put it in their hole if it won't just go ahead and just go ahead and cut it in half and that's it. You're gonna put about one to two cups of water in the bottom of your pressure cooker, put your little trivet, put the butternut squash on there and pressure cook for 20 minutes and allow for a natural release. At that point, it is fall apart tender. You don't, there's no hard cutting involved. Um, so I, what I did was I printed off a recipe or I wrote down a recipe that I found online. I already know I don't have all the ingredients for it and I also see some ingredients that I don't want or that I know my family doesn't like. So I just wanted to give y'all um, a walkthrough of how you can customize a recipe and 
make it your own. I have an index card here and a pen, and whenever I'm making my own recipe, trying to figure out what my family likes, I always write down exactly what I'm putting in, taste test as I go, write it down, and then at the end I have a published recipe that I know we can turn to again and again. And this is a really exciting experiment because this is why we grew butternut squash, was to try to find a butternut squash soup recipe that our family loves. So I'm excited to get the results of this. <laughs> okay, so first, if you were using a whole butternut squash from the store, you would just go ahead and cook that. And then at that point, you would just cube it up and put it into your blender. Um, I am doing two quarts total. I always have a little internal debate when I'm using canned goods about draining it, whether or not I should drain all that juice because I don't want my soup to be watery, but there's so much nutrition in the juice. Mm. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave one quart with water undrained and drain the other quart. Okay, next ingredient is chicken broth. If you remember those rotisserie chickens that we did on days, I think like two and three, um, I was going to can up all of that chicken broth that we made from the bones, but I ended up realizing it was way more of a bone broth, so I let it cook for like three days, um, and I ended up not canning it. This is what I ended up with, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to put in two cups of this broth. I'm not gonna worry about straining that fat out. Fat out. That's just extra flavor. It's not even liquidy. It's just like gel, almost gelatin from all that collagen and the bones. Okay. I'm gonna do half an onion. Get that chopped up real quick. You don't have to chop it up real small because it's going in the blender anyway. Then I'm going to do one tablespoon of dark brown sugar. And then now we're getting into our spices. So this is where a lot of changes are gonna be happening. I'm going to start out with, um, this is thyme from our garden. So the recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon of thyme. This is thyme that I mixed with salt already. I'm going to do a half teaspoon of that and then not add salt later. And the recipe also calls for an eight teaspoon of nutmeg. I do not have nutmeg, nutmeg but what I do have is pumpkin pie spice. And while there are a lot of other seasonings in this, uh, one thing that I know, I just, I know from past experience that pumpkin pie spice does really complement uh, butternut squash. But one way when I'm pairing spices and I'm having to change the recipe, you take a good smell of your soup base and then take a good smell of your spice. spice. You can kind of get a feel for if they go good together. Um, if, if you kind of cringe your nose a little bit when you smell that and then smell the spice, you know, it's probably not going to go good. So. Um, but I already know that this is going to work really well. I'm just going to do a teeny, 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 tiny bit. And sage, a quarter teaspoon of sage. Where's my little baggie? There it is. This is sage from our garden that I dehydrated and I didn't have enough to take the time to process it and bottle it up in a mason jar. So I just put it in a little baggie and hopefully I would remember to use it soon. <laughs> I'm going to pull off two leaves. Eh, how about three? I'll do three. Three little leaves of sage. And two tablespoons of butter. This blender will blend that up fine. We don't have to melt it first. I'm going to do slightly less than two tablespoons because butter is just ridiculously priced right now. Okay, let's give this a good blend and see how where we are. Now comes the fun part of tasting and seeing what it needs. I'm going to grab a spoon. And this is bearing in mind that it hasn't been heated up yet, and heating up does change the taste a little bit. Hmm. Definitely needs more salt. I'm going to add a little bit more of this thyme salt, a tad bit more of the pumpkin pie spice, and a little bit more pepper. Okay, I'm gonna do another half teaspoon of thyme salt. And if this recipe turns out good, I'm gonna post it on the blog. About a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and about a quarter teaspoon of this pumpkin pie spice. And let's give it a good blend.
We're gonna give it another taste. See where we're at. I just wanted to do this to show how easy it is to make your own recipes. Because when you first hear, at least for me, when I was thinking about making my own recipes, I'm like, there's no way I could possibly do that. Um, but soup, especially blender soup like this, is an excellent way to break into making your own recipes and making them exactly what your family likes. Mm. That is much better. Much better. I don't know if it needs much else. Okay, at this point, heating up does kind of make those spices kind of draw them out a bit, make them a little tad bit stronger. So now at this point, I'm just going to transfer it into a big pot. I'm going to let it heat up on low and taste it again and see if it needs any more salt. And I will be back when that's ready and when the cornbread's ready. Okay, y'all, I'm so excited because it turned out great. And now I know it is worth it to grow butternut squash in our garden. And remember, it's one of the long, if not the longest lasting whole food that there is and without any preservation needed. So you could just pick up several from the store and have a butternut squash soup makings on your shelf, not having to do any kind of preservation for it. <clears throat> now, what I ended up doing was I ended up salting to taste. And it was great. If it was just my husband and I, I would have left it at that. But it did have a very, very strong onion taste to it. And my three children, they, they like onion, but not a really strong raw onion. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I did is I added one more tablespoon of dark brown sugar, and then I added a third cup of sour cream and salted it to taste just a tad bit more and now it is perfect. I know my children are gonna love it. That raw onion taste, there's still some onion taste there but nowhere near as strong. Um, the cornbread came out, let me show you that. It's gonna be yummy. Here we go, yummy cornbread. Let me plate it up and show you real quick. <clears throat> and I could have easily Remember we had butter in here. I could have easily done ghee, which is self shelf stable, and I could have left out the sour cream and this meal would be 100% shelf stable. And whole food. Here we are. Butternut squash soup with a side of cornbread. Hope y'all enjoy. Bye.